Hey, good morning, it's Uncle Lou here. Yeah, that's right, it's me, Uncle Lou, and I'm live for you on YouTube today, and thanks for watching. Before we get started with today's preview video, I want to announce a couple of giveaways that I'm going to do. If you've been following along on my channel for a while, then you know that I, I like to do these uh, giveaways every so often. Over the last month or so, I've given away four or five uh, Loot Tube shirts and hats to just random people in the comments section uh, from time to time. But what I want to do today, I've got a couple of extra uh, Georgia jerseys. Anybody that joins the Patreon page between now and Sunday will be entered to win a jersey. If you're a Georgia fan, I've got a couple of jerseys here. Uh, you'll get it soon. Uh, if you're not a Georgia fan, you can still join up on the Patreon page. I'll order you a jersey of whatever team you're a fan of, whatever team you want. It obviously would take me a while to get that jersey in and then ship it to you. But anybody that joins the Patreon page between now and Sunday will be entered into that contest. If nobody joins, I'll keep the jerseys and give them away a different way. Uh, if one person joins, you're guaranteed to win. Uh, you get the idea. So anybody that joins up on the Patreon page between now and Sunday, the link is in the description of this video and every video uh, that I've done over the past, uh, I don't know, six months or so. It's the link that says, uh, I want to win a jersey and support the channel, something along those lines. It's the Patreon page, not hard to find. Anybody signs up over there between now and Sunday will be entered to win that jersey. Now, for those of you that are already on the Patreon page and thinking, well, that's not fair, of course, we already give away one jersey a month to a random Patreon member. What I'm going to do, tune in tonight to the live show, 10 p.m. I'll have an additional giveaway for current Patreon members. That's tonight, 10 p.m. Eastern on the Thursday night edition of Uncle Lou Live. And now, on to today's all right, just a reminder here that things are switched up a little bit this week with Georgia having a bye week this week, of course, on Tuesday. When I normally do the SEC preview video, I did the uh, UGA quarterback hokey pokey video. So the SEC video got moved to yesterday, which was Wednesday. Today, I normally do the top 25. Uh, well, actually, today I normally do the uh, week eight preview where I preview all the games that don't fit either in the SEC or the top 25. I'm going to move the top 25 preview to tomorrow. So today I'm going to be previewing games this weekend that are of interest to me that aren't SEC teams and aren't top 25 teams. And the reason I'm doing it that way instead of doing uh, the top 25 today is because there's a game tonight that I want to preview that doesn't fall into the top 25 category. So just again, yesterday, uh, well, Wednesday was the SEC preview. Today is going to be the week eight preview. And tomorrow, Friday, will be the top 25 preview. that I'm doing this season are sponsored by the good people over at betnow.eu. There's a link in the description of this video that'll take you over there and they're going to get you set up with all your college football betting needs for the entire season. They've even given me a promo code to let you guys use. So when you get signed up over there, make sure you enter the promo code Uncle Lou. That's one word, all lowercase letters, Uncle Lou, and they're going to give you a 100% bonus on whatever you deposit. Good luck. All right, here we go. Now, per usual, I'm going to start with one NFL game, the Thursday night game. This is something I've been doing all season. I cover the Thursday night NFL game every week when I do this set of preview videos. I, this is a college football channel. 99% of what I do is college football, but I'm all the time having people ask me to include the NFL. And the only way I could have, I've really been able to find time to do that is to include the one Thursday night NFL game in my uh, preview videos that I do during the week. For the people that hate the NFL for a variety of reasons, look, I, I get it, and I see your comments every week reminding me how much you hate the NFL, and you can continue to leave those comments. That, that's fine. I completely understand that. Um, if I only made videos that pleased 100% of the people that watch this channel, though, I wouldn't be able to make any videos at all. So fast forward about two or three minutes if, you, if it really hurts your feelings that much to hear somebody talk about the NFL. All right. Terrible game tonight. Denver Broncos at Arizona Cardinals. Three wins combined between these two teams. Uh, Arizona's at one and five. Their only wins over to 49ers. Broncos not much better at two and four with wins over to Seahawks and the Raiders. Two teams with struggling QBs, uh, really. Neither one of these starting quarterbacks have more touchdowns than they do interceptions. Cardinals have chosen to go with rookie Josh Rosen. Two touchdowns, two interceptions. Broncos have uh, Case Keenum, been around a while, seven touchdowns. 
eight interceptions. David Johnson, running back for the Cardinals. He's had some good years in the past, a little disappointing this year. And if you look at the uh, wide receiver comparison, Arizona, Christian Kirk, he's their leading receiver. But his numbers pale in comparison, really, to Emmanuel Sanders over with the Broncos. Uh, this is a road game for the Broncos, but they're a one-and-a-half-point favorite here. Uh, this will not be an interesting, I mean, th this, watching this game, would. It, it, this is like a preview. This is the NFL version of Florida versus Florida State later in the year. Uh, two average teams with no-show offenses, right? Uh, this won't be an interesting game to watch. The over-under on this game is 42, and I, I don't talk a lot about over-unders when I do these preview videos, but to be honest, I would take the under 42 here. These offenses are just terrible. Let's just be real. Broncos are a one and a half point favorite if you're looking for a side to play. I, I normally, I love taking prime time home underdogs, and that's what the Cardinals are in this one. But one and a half is really no points at all. I do think the Broncos are the better team with the better defense. So give me Denver, and I'll lay the one and a half. All right, now on to this week's college games. And just as a reminder, if you skip past the beginning of the video, I did all the SEC team previews on uh, Wednesday, yesterday. Is that right? I think that is right. Yeah, yesterday, Wednesday. Today, I'm doing all the games that are of interest to me that aren't SEC games and aren't top 25 teams. And then tomorrow, I will do a preview of all the top 25 matchups for this week. So uh, here we go. Per usual, we're going to start with the noon games and run through the primetime games Saturday night. Uh, actually, we're going to start with a Thursday night game. But per usual, there's some pretty good matchups here involving some teams that are, that are of interest to me or some of you guys in the comments section. Um, some, t you know, not a whole lot to choose from when you're talking about non-SEC and non-ranked teams, but here we go. Tonight, Thursday night, 9 o'clock on ESPN, you got Stanford traveling to take on Arizona State. Stanford's a two-and-a-half point favorite in this one, a road favorite here. Uh, Stanford's four and two. They've lost two in a row, right, to Notre Dame and Utah. Arizona State, three and three. Sort of a weird season for uh, Arizona State. They beat Michigan State, and you look back now and you say, how the, how the hell did that happen? Uh, but it did. They beat Michigan State, turned around and lost to San Diego State. So it's been an up-and-down season for Arizona State, which, to be honest, you see that a lot uh, when a team brings in a new coach. And, of course, Arizona State has that dinosaur, Herm Edwards. They dusted him off, uh, dragged him out of ESPN. He's head coaching down there now for the Sun Devils. Uh, so Stanford goes on the road here. Will Bryce Love play? Will he show up? He, he hasn't looked like the same Bryce Love this year. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I just think Stanford's a better team here than Arizona State. I, I know, you know, the loss to Notre Dame, that sort of is what it is. Uh, the, the loss to Utah. Listen, Utah's probably going to win the uh, Pac-12 South. Uh, them or Southern Cal. And actually, they play this week, too. We'll talk about that game in a minute. But I just think Stanford's the better team. And maybe this is my David Shaw bias coming through here. Of course, I'm a huge David Shaw fan. I think he's a good coach out there. I think he gets the most out of what he has available, given how hard it is to get into Stanford for most college athletes. Two and a half, not a whole lot of points. Again, here, I'm going against my own rule. I did this with the NFL game. I'm going to do it again here, and I'm going to take a road favorite. Uh, but give me Stanford and lay the two and a half. All right, Virginia at Duke. And before you skip forward and say, why, why are you talking about Virginia and Duke? What if I told you that Duke was five and one? Would that blow your mind? What if I told you Virginia was four and two? I mean, both of these teams, I think, are exceeding expectations this year. And you can look at their schedules and say, well, who had they play? Woo! And believe me, I, you, I know you will. And, and I get what you're saying. But again, the point is, this is Virginia and Duke. These are usually the teams that other teams play. And then you ask those other teams, who have you played? You didn't play nobody but Duke and Virginia, woo. So listen, four and two for Virginia, uh, five and one for uh, Duke. Duke's only lost to Virginia Tech. Uh, Virginia, a big win last week over uh, Miami, right? Now, some people saw that coming, like Uncle Lou. If you listen to me and took Virginia last week, you made yourself some money in that one. Uh, but they did lose to Indiana. That one is kind of hard to understand. And they lost to NC State, who turns out to be a pretty good team this year. So Virginia... 4-2 uh, and two on the road at Duke. Duke's a 7.5-point favorite in this one, so more than, a, uh, more than a touchdown favorite there. This one comes on Saturday, 12.30. On, uh, I don't think it comes on T ACC Network, or if you have the Watch ESPN app, I think you can watch it on there. But it'd be hard to find this one on TV, I think, unless you're local to one of these two schools. I can't believe I'm doing this. Third game in a row this week, I'm taking a, a road uh, team. But uh, now this one's an underdog, 7.5 points. I do think Duke will win this game, but I think Virginia can keep it closer than a touchdown. 
Um, now, that was an emotional win for Virginia last week, so it worries me a little bit that they may have done a little bit too much celebrating on, on Saturday night, Sunday, and Monday with the big win over Miami rather than preparing for Duke. But I'm going to roll the dice here since this is over a touchdown spread, and I'm going to take the underdog. Give me Virginia, and I'll take the 7.5 points. All right, another ACC matchup here, and this is a team I've been trying to cover every week even though they're not SEC and not ranked, but that's FSU. They host Wake Forest this week, uh, and FSU, believe it or not, Ten and a half point favorite here. If you watched FSU play the first few weeks of the season, it, it, it was hard to imagine at that point that they would ever be a ten and a half point favorite at any point during the season. But they are. They're a ten and a half point home favorite in this one over Wake Forest. But Wake Forest is a bad, bad team. They're three and three. Of course, they got destroyed by Clemson last week, sixty-three to three. But even if you look at their three wins, uh, you know, speaking of the who have you played routine, Tulane, Towson, and Rice are the only three wins for, uh, for Wake Forest. They lost to Boston College. Of course, I mentioned the blowout last week to the Taters. I, I think Florida State rolls in this game. It's at home. Florida State, to me, offensively, has looked a little bit better over the last couple of weeks than they did the first two weeks of the season when, let's be real, they just looked totally lost under new head coach Willie Taggart's brand-new offensive system that he's installed down there. And I do still like Florida State's defense. Now, uh, you can look at some of the numbers of Florida State's defense and, and, and maybe think it's not all that good. But you have to keep in mind, Florida State's offense has been so bad, particularly the first uh, three, four games of this season. The defense spent a lot of time on the field. So, of course, they're going to give up some yards and some points. But overall, I think Florida State has a pretty good defense. I think the offense is getting better. I think Wake Forest is a terrible, terrible team. Florida State's at home. I'm going to take the home favorite here. Give me the Seminoles. I think they roll. I'll lay the 10 and a half. How about a Big Ten matchup here? Minnesota on the road at Nebraska. Nebraska, of course, still searching for their first win. UCLA finally picked up their first win last week. Big win over Cal. Nebraska had the game one last week. And, and listen, if you've been following Nebraska, if you're a Nebraska fan, uh, you need some blood pressure medicine. I mean, you need to do something. I mean, they are finding new ways to lose every single week. Nebraska had every chance to win that game last week on the road at Northwestern. Northwestern's been a terrible home team this year. They had lost every single home game they played, Northwestern had, uh, heading into that Nebraska game. I took Nebraska last week because of that, and they should have won the game. They, they, they played better. They looked like the better team. Uh, they were in position to win. I mean, it just made no sense. But like I said, they keep finding new ways to lose. Now Nebraska's back at home, and they're favored by three and a half over Minnesota. I don't get it. Nebraska's 0-6, finding new ways to lose every week. Minnesota is 3-3. Three and three. Uh, Now, they started off 3-0. and They've lost their last three uh, to, to Maryland, Ohio State, and Iowa. But those are three of the, of the better teams in the Big Ten this year. Those are definitely three teams in the top half of the Big Ten. Even Maryland, uh, I think, this year fits into the top six or seven teams within the Big Ten. Nebraska does not fit that category. They're by far the worst team in the Big Ten this year, and it's not close. I don't understand why Nebraska is favored in this game. I know it's at home. It's over a field goal, which makes even less sense. I mean, okay, maybe this game is close and Nebraska hits a game-winning field goal uh, and wins by two or three. Uh, that's still a winner if you play Minnesota. Give me the road dog here. I'm going to take Minnesota and give me the three and a half points. I, I, I'm not, I, I can't believe in Nebraska until I see them find a way to win it as opposed to inventing new ways to lose. All right, now this is probably the best game that I'm covering today in terms of uh, long-term implications for the season. Even though these two teams aren't ranked, Southern Cal goes on the road to play Utah. Utah is a seven and a half point favorite. This one comes on eight o'clock on the Pac-12 network. The winner of this game, in my opinion, will be playing in the Pac-12 title game. Uh, USC is 4-2, and two, Utah's 4-2, and two, right? Southern Cal uh, uh, beat Colorado last week 31-20, to 20, which was undefeated at the time, so that was Colorado's first loss. Probably the best game that Southern Cal has played this year, particularly on defense. They just looked really, really good last week. And Southern Cal is young on offense and improving week to week. Uh, I, I've mentioned this 100 times during the offseason and all through the season, and I'm going to keep saying it too. Southern Cal has no problem recruiting skill position players. Uh, no pro they're in a recruiting hotbed. But they lost their starting quarterback from last year, their, starting wide or their number one wide receiver from last year, and their leading rusher from last year. That's hard to replace for any team in one season, and you saw some of that 
in the beginning of the year for Southern Cal as they struggled offensively. JT Daniels, the quarterback, is getting better every week, like I mentioned. I know they're playing on the road here at Utah. I thought about taking Southern Cal in this game in the seven and a half points. I think Utah comes away with a big win here and ends up winning the Pac-12 South and playing in the uh, Pac-12 championship game. Their only two losses are to Washington and Washington State. Washington State, I believe, has one loss on the season. Washington only has two. Both pretty good teams there. I think Utah gets it done at home and wins by more than seven and a half. All right, and last up today, another one out in the Pac-12. This will be your nightcap this weekend. Arizona at UCLA, 1030 over on ESPN2. Can UCLA win two in a row after starting off, what, 0-5 or whatever it was? They're sitting at 1-5 now. Arizona been a huge disappointment this year, in my opinion. They bring Kevin Sumlin in from Texas A&M, pay him a ton of money, and Khalil Tate has regressed, quarterback from Arizona. Uh, came into the season as uh, a Heisman candidate uh, to a lot of people. If you looked at a top 10 list of Heisman candidates preseason, he was on almost every single one. Huge disappointment. It seems like he's gotten worse to me. Kevin Sumlin sort of had a plan coming into this season to run him a lot less and develop his passing, and it just hasn't worked out. Arizona's sitting at 3-4. and four. UCLA, like I mentioned, at 1-5. and five. Big road win. I don't know who saw that coming last week, but I didn't. I I, when I looked at these, when I looked at UCLA and Nebraska last week and tried to figure out, okay, can either one of these winless dumpster fires get a win? I said Nebraska. No way UCLA can do it on the road at a Cal team that's been overperforming this year. I was wrong. Nebraska lo uh, lost. UCLA rolled to a big. I think they won 35 to seven or something at Cal. So they come back home here after finally winning the game. Monkeys off their back. I think UCLA rolls in this one too. I'm going to take the home favorite here and lay the eight and a half points. All right, that's it for today's preview video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a thumbs up if you uh, can. Share this video. Subscribe if you're not already. I post college football videos almost every single day of the year. And don't forget, join up on the Patreon page between now and Sunday. Every new member that joins the Patreon page between now and Sunday will be entered in a contest to win a, a jersey of your choice. We'll probably give that jersey away. I Probably Monday on the live show, we'll give that jersey away to whoever signs up on Patreon between now and Sunday. To the current Patreon members, if you're already over there, tune into the live show tonight, Thursday night, 10 p.m. Eastern, and we'll do a, uh, an additional giveaway for you guys, too. I appreciate you watching, and y'all have a great morning.